Good morning, garden friends. Welcome back to Not Quite Homesteading, ESK Garden. Today, I'm going to be taking you guys on a full garden tour. And we're doing this because this is right before I start to plant all of my spring, summer seed starts. And I want to show you guys the state of the garden before we get into all the newness that is going to be spring 2023. So before we do that, if you are new here, if you're a gardener looking for community support, if you're a gardening enthusiast or you're just someone that likes to follow along with people's gardening journeys, take a moment and hit the subscribe button. Let's engage in the comments and have some good conversation and fun around gardening. I am going to call this a February garden tour. It is January 31st on the day that I'm recording this. You guys will probably see this a few weeks out from the recorded date. But I'm calling it a February garden tour because it's basically going to be the start of February and I'm intending to do my seed planting starting on February 2nd. So I wanted to show you guys um, what is out here now, some of the things that I have done and have been working on. And then once I share this, um, the video that you guys can expect probably almost immediately after, it may be one or two videos behind, is my uh 2023 garden plan so let's go ahead and jump into this because there is a lot going on here and um i haven't shared it in a while so i'm excited to share it with you guys so in this little crate here i have my very first spinach plant that i planted and we're going to talk more about this in a different video but this plant is probably going to be going out despite the fact that it looks like it's trying to make a comeback. But I'll share more details about that in a different video. On this side, I have my catnip plant. Um, this plant I planted in August 2022. It's done pretty well. It seems like it's kind of starting to veer off a little bit. So catnip is supposed to be planted in June where I am. So I don't know that... Um, I will necessarily just throw the plant out but you can tell that it's kind of like in need of some TLC probably a little trim back and maybe some fertilizer I have my Swiss chard plant still here that I haven't taken out um, it seems like it's trying to grow but it seems like every time the leaves get to this place I always see these like little holes and things so I'm not really certain of the health of that plant but I am going to be at some point um, cleaning this out and prepping these jars for new plantings. This is another Swiss chard that I had um, seeded and seems like a couple of them are trying to grow now. Over on this side we have some cilantro that is growing pretty nicely. I went ahead and started these from seed so I don't remember if I gave an update before this video but the ones that I had, I had attempted to propagate from the store I ended up pulling all of those out so these are all cilantro seedlings that are growing up now i have my sage plant which i think at this point is kind of done um it keeps getting attacked which i don't even know how it's inside the patio but i'm gonna go ahead and do away with this plant and clean this container out over here i have a second spinach plant that i had started growing in a small uh, one gallon container it seems to be doing pretty okay I fertilized it recently so um, it probably needs a little water, some leak, clean off of the leaves and you know it'll be good to go. I have my green onion plant over here that made its comeback from the frost and this is what it's looking like now. Um, I have a lot more of these like kind of hanging over but the plant itself you know the plants are fine. And I haven't been using green onions as much, so I haven't been harvesting them regularly like I once was. But we will be doing that uh, pretty soon. And then over here, I have a collard plant. A few of them that probably are growing in containers <laughs> that are way too small for their needs. But I wanted to try like baby collards, so I'm attempting to keep these at a baby stage for right now. I want to go ahead and harvest some and stir fry them. I also want to harvest them because I want to stimulate the plants to grow a little bit more and what I may do at that point is take out the ones that really aren't doing well because they just don't have the room but beautiful collard plant that survived and actually started to thrive after that arctic glass that we had 
so it's funny because um like i'm gonna show you guys the patio plants but the sun literally just came out as i was about to record this video it's been so gloomy so rainy here this week we're supposed to be getting basically like a full week of rain which is like i guess good and bad at the same time because I just repotted like my citrus trees and I ended up having to cover them up so that they don't take in too much water um, because I don't want them to get like root rot. But it's been so gloomy, so rainy and I stepped outside and the sun came out. So it's kind of playing like hide and seek right now. It is really nice here. I will say that for the end of January. I think our temperature is somewhere around 60 or 65 degrees. Um, very much spring like weather and this is kind of why i'm trying to get things underway now because it seems like we're gonna have weather like this for pretty much the bulk of february and as soon as we hit march um, our temperatures are supposed to start hitting like the 70s so i have a lot of work ahead of me i have a very short period of time to get myself prepared and yeah this is kind of where we are so let's take a look at uh what's going on in the patio garden and i've done i call myself trying to do like a little design with the patio bags because there are so many of them now but let's take a look at where we are with some of these crops so these are my carrots and i believe these are nantes carrots um i've been fertilizing them i would say over the last like month or so it seemed like they were growing pretty slow. Um, I shot them with some nitrogen and some phosphorus and potassium. Pretty balanced but really high percentages and the leaves started growing pretty good. So I'm hoping that you know the leaves will shoot up a little bit so that they can start to get the energy that they need to help the carrots fruit. I have some more spinach that I planted a, a few weeks ago over here as well as some winter density romaine. No, I have some mini romaine that I planted. Now this is supposed to be a red variety. This has been slow to grow all season for me. These are pretty new plantings but I do have some in the raised bed that I will show you that to me are moving really really slow. I've heard people say that they have issues with red varieties of lettuce. Um, it seems to be a common thing like they're very slow to grow or um, maybe they're finicky so if you guys have any tips if you've been able to grow like red lettuce and be successful with them like blooming to a full head let me know some of the things that you've done because as of right now I don't think I um, am a lettuce connoisseur <laughs> so I could use a little help in that department these are my parsnips uh, much like the carrots i did the same thing they seemed like they were a little slow to get their leaves out so i shot them with some fertilizer and we're starting to see some greenery on them obviously we need the green in order for the fruit to grow so i'm hoping that that will help them along now i did plant these out of season so i don't know that i'm expecting a lot from them during the spring but maybe we'll get something In this little baggie over here, I have some snow peas that I've been trying to help train up my little DIY trellis situation. Um, they seem to be doing pretty okay with the grow up. Um, these were the ones that I told you they got off to a really bad start because they were behind the, um, they were shaded out by the, the pak choy. And now they seem to be doing pretty okay. I went ahead and planted more seeds. You guys can see the seedlings coming up in here. So I was like, I didn't know what to plant with them. I think when I talked about it, uh oh, this little guy is getting beat up by a wood chip. <laughs> I didn't really know what to plant there. So I just went ahead and added some more of those seeds. I probably will still end up planting some other things with this. Um, I do have a grow bag layout plan that I will share with you guys in a separate video so there will be some other things going in here so in this bag we have green onions now I sowed some more seeds of these probably about a month ago at this point and those are starting to come out pretty nicely so I'm trying to fill this bag out with green onions 
this is going to be my green onion bag moving forward um, or until further notice. On this side, we have parsley, which I just cut back recently. So I cut it back and I fertilized it. So I'm hoping that we get some more um, bushel growth with the parsley. I have no idea what this is on the side of the bag. I'm probably going to have to take this off. I don't know if it's like eggs or if it's dirt or whatever but we're gonna go ahead and get that off of there because we don't want any issues around here um this is where i have my other planting of snow peas and you guys can see that this plant is doing a lot better than the first one i showed you and this is because this one didn't really have anything shading it out but at the same time uh oh i hate those things um at the same time it just didn't have the proper trellising situation going on so i had to do a little makeshift something <laughs> and it seems to be working out pretty okay i forget the name of this thing here i don't know if you guys can see that but i'll try to um post it and oh where is he at I'll try to post it if I can find it, but there's some sort of like, they're harmless to, I guess, us, and I think the plants, if I'm not mistaken. But my understanding is like, if they bite you, it burns or stings or something like that. So he's out pretty early. You, I haven't seen those since, I wanna say, maybe like late fall and this one is red i think the one i saw then was orange so not really sure what's going on there i don't know what they feed on but they definitely like to be in the soil and I, it may be the bugs so i'm not really sure but i'll if i can find it i'll leave it um across the screen so i went ahead and shifted this little plant pot here and these are mungs down here. I don't know if these are going to come back. Um, I'm trying to give them a little bit before I remove them to see if they're going to do anything. Mums are a kind of like full winter plant. And that, that's when they're sold out here. So I don't know what they'll do in the spring, if they'll do anything in the spring. But I will say if in like the next two weeks or so, they don't do anything, I will go ahead and remove them and get some of my spring flowers in. I have spring flowers in both of these pots now I'll be honest I did not label them um, I don't remember which ones are which but I did plant alyssum and marigolds so the marigolds that I planted are flamenco and they are such a beautiful color I really hope they come up that the color I really hope they come up the color that I saw them on um, the website that I ordered them from but I think these might be the marigolds and I think these might be the alism. So I'm not sure, but that's one of those two will come up in one of those ways. Over here we have our leeks. And then I believe I had showed a video of me planting additional leeks here. So you guys can see that my original leeks, they are starting to get a little bit of size on them. And then I have all the other ones that I just dropped seeds for around they're starting to come up so what i think i am going to do probably not today but during my next like just garden work day i will go ahead and top the soil up just a little bit not enough to cover those but just enough to bring it up maybe like an inch and a half or so that way i can get these covered some um, i want to have really nice white stalks so these have been around for a while. I want to get them covered and then that will help, I guess, um, till up the ones that are growing newly so that they don't have a lot of green being exposed to the uh, elements for too long. In this little bag over here, I have my beets, which are looking wonderful, if I do say so myself. I have struggled with beets up to this point you guys so i gave these i gave all my bags a dose of fertilizer i want to say yesterday two days ago and i can see that it looks like we're gonna start having um bulbing soon i don't know if you can see the thickness on this root here 
I had you guys close in already. I don't know if you can see the thickness on that like root, but they're definitely looking like they're going to start bulbing pretty soon. This is an empty bag. I just removed my tomato plant from there, so I do have a plan for that bag pretty soon. I actually have some new bags that I just set up with soil and fertilizer um, to give the, bag, the soil a chance to um, kind of soak up some of the fertilizer and you know be ready for whatever is coming into it. I do have plans for these three. So I'll be starting seeds in these uh, this week. On this side, I have my purple dragon carrots. Now, these have been growing for a little bit. Um, same situation as the other carrots. So I gave them some fertilizer, a little boost recently. I also dropped some more seeds. I dropped, I think, the rest of the seeds I had for this variety in here. They take a very, very long time to germinate, it seems. It seems like I have one coming up. But I will say I am not a fan of these for the simple fact that the germination rate does not seem very uh, high. Now, I don't know how the carrot itself will grow, but if I try these again, I don't know if it makes a difference, you know, which seed company you get them from. I will try them from a different seed company because the germination was not good compared to some of the other things that I have planted. On this side, I have some radishes, which very sad my radish I let this radish finally grow to its full size and I was saying that I was gonna harvest it I want to say this was Monday it rained so hard Sunday night that the radish burst open and that's extremely disappointing because this is probably the largest radish that I've grown thus far like I said we've had significant rain so I guess too much rain for you know the size of the fruit and it just kind of burst open after not having like adequate and I'll say adequate water um, because I do let the grow bags dry out a bit now because it's cold and I just don't want things to be soggy. I also have some golden beets in this particular bag and I have dropped more radish seeds because those were almost the size so the golden beets they're running a little bit slow in this baggie but they are starting seemingly to like pick up if you can see them there and then the new radish uh, seedlings are popping up and this plant I have some green bean plants that are dead and long overdue for pulling um, I do need to get them out because I ended up having to cut back like my rosemary because I think whatever was going on with those kind of transferred over a little bit um, and it seems like I'm getting a little bit more. You can see it's like black in some places. So I definitely want to get that away from my rosemary. And then I have rosemary here with what looks like a little ladybug of some sorts kind of hiding out in between. But I haven't messed with her. She's been there for a couple of days now. But we definitely are going to work on getting these out this week. On this side, we have our repotted key lime plant. And I am so excited about this. I do have it covered now. Like I said, we're expecting... A lot of rain and I had watered these in when I transplanted them and then it rained extremely heavily on Sunday so I think they've gotten more water than they need and probably is good for the plant so I don't want them getting wet anymore um, but we have some blossoms here which I thought was pretty cool I actually have some open flowers so it seems like this is kind of ready to fruit um, it is a self-pollinating plant, so, you know, I guess with wind, it will do whatever it needs to do. But they look so pretty in the pots, and I can't wait to show you guys the pots when this little bag is off. And on this side, I have my repotted Meyer lemon plant. Um, this one does have blooms on it, although none of them have opened and blossomed just yet. Pretty nice. I'm very, very excited about getting fruit off of these these this year and then to the garden bed you guys know that this is my onion bed um the onions seem to be doing pretty well it's probably time for me to feed these again um, i'm growing red onions and white onions i don't remember the specific varieties off the top of my head 
but that is what I'm growing here they didn't have yellow onions at the time I went to plant or purchase my onion seeds rather um, in this bed we have some broccoli that is heading very nicely I should be able to harvest this probably in like another week week or two um, this one is coming up pretty nicely as well we have some endive in here um, it seems like only one of my endive seeds grew but I have some newer broccoli that are coming up and starting to spread their wings so I'm hoping to get these first two out of here really really soon so that it can give room to some of the other plants that are actually fruiting and I don't run into issues where I lose plants because they simply do not have the room to grow. And then of course I have my mustards over here and then I have some collards growing underneath there which I also want to get them some sunlight. We have several broccolis growing on this side and then I also want to give some room to my cauliflower plants which are over here um, because they are not really getting the sunlight that they need. They're being shaded out by the broccoli so um but they are there i'm i'm pretty sure they will survive you know like i said once this wet weather goes away it's going to be pretty warm for us and then i think they will do well for the rest of the season on this side you guys can see we have our kale which i've harvested from a few times and i've shared that with you guys um, it seems like the cabbages are beginning to try to really head. Now, I have packed this bed way too full. Um, one of the things that I learned recently is that you actually should not plant brassicas like this together, especially like cabbage and broccoli or broccoli and cauliflower because they're all heavy feeders. So that could be one of the reasons I'm having a really hard time with the growth on these and i probably need to amp up the fertilizer and what i think i'm actually going to do is use a water soluble fertilizer to give them a, an immediate boost and then i'll do a significant fertilizing of the slow release and i'm hoping that uh, that will push them through the next month or so and impact the growth in a way that we can get these out in time for me to use them by maybe april mid-april and then I have on this side clearly some diseased leaves that I need to pull out but I also have some more broccoli here that's heading up and looking really nice and then you can see the difference in these leaves um, because of like I said I think the uh, fertilization kind of issue these leaves are much much smaller than the ones on the other side so I'm not expecting these broccoli heads to get super big. On this side, I have my celery, which I'm going to be pulling this out pretty soon. We have some lettuce. Um, I have red lettuce over there. I don't know if you guys can see that, but I have some winter density romaine. I have some arugula on that side. I have a head of crispino lettuce that really needs to come out. And then I'm growing some more crispino in the middle. We have some lettuce that it looks like are popping up. I cut them back. I think those are um, butter lettuce, but they are coming up. And then we have our garlic, and these are coming up pretty nicely around the edges. So I'm excited to see what happens with those. And then I have some green onions that I'm eventually going to pull from this bed as well. And then lastly on this side, you guys can see these are my blueberry trees. So I have a Centurion Blueberry and a Brightwell Blueberry. I don't know which one is which right now. I want to say the Centurion might be this like really big one. And then this is the Brightwell. So we have these covered up as well just so that they're not getting too much water. Um, on this little plant here, I have something sprouting. I have no idea what it is. I intended to plant flowers here. Um, I don't know that I ever got around to it because the soil was just too wet at the time that I wanted to plant and I left it but it seems like something was in there that was destined to grow and I have no idea what it is. 
and then lastly on this side um, I have another plant which I don't remember the name of this plant either this is a winter plant here I'm trying to give it just a tiny bit of time to see if it's going to do anything else if not I will pull these and use this for planting some of my spring summer flowers and that is everything you guys so I hope that you guys enjoyed this full tour of the garden that I have going right now things are going to look very different here in a month and I am super excited about it I will definitely bring you guys along on that journey so I appreciate you for spending some time with me today and I hope that you guys enjoyed this video until our next garden update I will see you soon friends bye